Hi, Kevin. Welcome to World Building Secrets. <laughs> Hi, Zuzi. Thank you. So first of all, you have to tell us how you came across the universe. Oh, abs absolutely. Um, I was uh, I was on a vacation with my family. We actually I was taking the kids back down to to Disneyland, and uh, there was a gentleman sitting in the seat next to me um, who was like flipping through his stuff and doing a lot. He's very busy, and, uh, and I looked over and I saw. Um, just like the landing page of the universe, like Ray, you walk into the portal. I was just like, what? Like, that's really cool. And what is that? And I saw universe, never heard of this before. So like, of course, like I Google it and I start like figuring out what it is. <laughs> I'm reading up on it. I'm like, oh, wow, this is actually a really cool idea um, behind the whole thing. Uh, just especially when you're talking like, you know, copyright and like, you know, community ownership um, mm -hmm. is kind of a topic close and near and dear to my own heart. So that piqued my curiosity. So I'm, I'm reading through all this stuff. I'm like trying to figure out all the different content. Um, and uh, I'm like, I just immediately fell in love with this whole thing. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't until a little bit later, I realized the guy sitting next to me is Brent Friedman. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, snap. Okay, well now I have no to way. ask questions. And so I was like, um, I was trying not to be too creepy about it. I'm like, Hey, I, I wasn't just stalking you for the last 30 minutes, but like, I have a lot of questions now <laughs> and, when, and he was super, Honestly, super nice respect, about it. That's tough. Like, especially sitting next to on the plane is the worst. Yeah. Like I would never, I'm always like this, you know, like I have imaginary walls on the sides of my, on the side of my head. Yep. Um, so good for you. No, it was funny. My, my wife and the kids were across the aisle. So like, I was kind of like, I'm Mike by myself. But poor Brent had the middle seat the entire flight. Oh no! So you asked Brent, how did that interaction go? It was awesome. Um, I mean, like he's very uh, I mean, he's he's very kind. He, he gave me a lot more time than I was ever anticipate someone uh, uh, to, to like give um, something like that, which is which is cool because he got into it. He started talking about like his Star Wars history and all this sort of stuff. I'm just like, oh, this is so cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and so we kind of chatted the the entire um, flight down there, um, and, you know, connected with him. Like, I'm going to have more questions, and the more I learn about this, and that was on the day that uh, the first issue of Malcolm Orion was released. So then I was like, okay. quickly reading That's up on timing. that, and just like, man, it was it was perfect timing because I, I made it in with that, and I made it in for the first collectible that got released uh, shortly there, oh my God. thereafter. Which That's was amazing. Cool. Yeah. That's so it was, cool. It was a, I mean, a heck of a way to kickstart the universe experience for me. I think that's the ultimate marketing is just have Brent on flights and just <laughs> flying him around. get him flying around the world. Are you a gamer at all? Uh, I used to be. I haven't mm -hmm. um, a lot in a long time. Um, okay. I, I think my, my time in the military and just kind of, you know, family life is that kind of fell away from it. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I transitioned out of active duty back in 2016. I was able to go to film school and, and I kind of fell in love with kind of my second life of doing like videos and, um, you know, wanting to, to, you know, short films and music videos and all that types of stuff. And, um, and so I never really f found my way back to doing video games, but I'm, I'm very interested in developing video content and, um, and exploring that realm. Um, it's still on my bucket list to do a feature film. I just got to make sure all the, all the stars align to, to do that eventually. Um, it's a little bit harder the older you get, I think. I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. So what did you, um, what did you first think when you read the first issue? Oh man. So my, my first thought was, the part that stood out to me um, at the first issue was, you know, a population of about 500,000 on Mars. And like, I'm like, how did we get there? Like, <laughs> what's the technology behind it? Right. And yeah. so uh, like my, my past life experience is all engineering. I have my undergrads in electrical engineering. Um, when I was in part of the, the Navy, I was a submariner. So like we operated the nuclear power plants. And so like, I'm thinking like, how is this going to talk about how, that? How, I, <laughs> I was like, how is this going to work? And of course, like, I know Elon Musk has been talking about, oh, life on Mars for a while. So it kind of you know, piqued my yeah. curiosity of just like, but time to start reading up on it. That's a cool perspective time. to can like compare it to is if you think yeah. of like what the universe is, the context that the universe is set in. And if you really mm -hmm. compare it to where, where we're at right now, technologically, like we're nowhere near yeah. going to Mars. Nowhere mm -hmm. near, not yet. No, Soon. absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Um, Yes, that's a very so, interesting. Very comparison. curious to like what that life would be like, and especially for like who the who are the first Martians, right? The the, yeah. the first kids who get born on Mars, and what is that life like for them? 
Um, and I think that's a part of the whole uni universe that I love um, a lot. And I think Andy Baker talked about this on your, on your show. It's just like, it, there's naturally going to be a lot of curiosity to want to fit like to fill in us now to how did we get to, you know, 200 years from now when Malcolm's story is happening. And then how did we get mm -hmm. to 500 years from then to when the actual main storyline start kicking off? There's such, yeah. there's such an opportunity there for any type of creators, like comic books or art or just, you know, uh, novels or anything like that to be able to start filling in those gaps. Uh, so is that something just, you took away from when you read that story issue or once you already like, oh, yeah. integrated so, <laughs> I assaulted Brent with a lot of questions he was not allowed to answer um, right after that. Uh, that uh, usually happens. There's, like, there's a whole other dynamic to it as well. It was just like, wait, so you know, politically, like if, if Earth is financing this entire movement over to Mars and – like there's going to be some expectation of return on investment. I mean, you could throw back to American Revolution example of, well, you you are now a colony of us. Like we expect yeah. this taxation to occur. I'm like, are Absolutely. we going to see a repeat in history occur there? At that point, in nothing's time, I think free. We, we didn't have a lot of the uh, additional details that have emerged since then, but um, still a lot of speculation. I think of just ideas of what what could be and how how we got there. Yeah. I think that's incredible. That was your first, I mean, kind of first impressions, right? Because like the entire story is designed like purposefully to be designed like that, because obviously we mm -hmm. want it to be community owned. Um, and we want, you know, community members like yourself to start creating. I think, you know, obviously you having an advantage of um, having some sort of skills in video creation um, probably helped. Because <laughs> I'm sure that there's some people that are like, I'm not really sure what I can do here. But I think it's a matter of, you know, everybody just finding what they're good at and then also mm -hmm. finding the right people to start collaborating with. Um, Absolutely. So you when so you created a beautiful story visualization. Let's talk about the first one. Oh, thank you. Okay. Of the issue, the chair. It's like the second yes. issue chair. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about that. How did you, did somebody tell you to do it? Did somebody motivate you to do it? Did you just no, find inspiration? I got the idea. I forget who posted it in Discord, but um, there was there was the idea started coming around. I was like, "Hey, we are looking for a voice for Malcolm, right?" Mm, and people mm -hmm. started like reading the like different segments out of yeah. the out of the stories <laughs> and posting like their own stuff. Um, and I, I was prepping for a corporate video um, voiceover um, shoot for an animated project that I'm doing, and uh, my two good, close friends of mine um, that were that help me with that project all the time. Uh, great voices. They're amazing actors and they're just fun to work with. And we're always looking for creative things to do. Um, so I was like, this is, I built it into the schedule. I'm like, okay, we, we have to do this at the end if we have time. So I, I just, it was just a copy and paste from the story, scripted it out, threw it in the back of the pack. Um, and uh, so we went down to the, to the studio in Seattle and I was like, okay, if we have 20 pages of corporate lingo we got to get through and if we if you guys do it with enough time then we have this you know something creative and fun that we can explore with sure they went through those 20 pages like that like they were all like it was the most efficient voiceover session i think i've had in a long time seriously um, oh they were they were stoked about it they had never heard of the, uh, the story but i was just kind of giving them a little little, little uh, background on it and they're like yes i want to do this um and so we, ha we had an hour left in the studio and we just played around with it and I think for some, if you've never had an experience of working with actors in kind of a collaborative setting like that, it's so much fun. Oh, um, it's so I wish fun. everyone could see the performance from when we started, the range of dynamics that we experimented with during that hour, and then we finally settled on what you what it ended up being. Um, because like the first the first time was very timid and it's just kind of like exploring the always lines is, or something right? like that. Always is yeah. right. Um, but then at at some point in times like uh, uh, Mer Meredith who's doing the female voice like she is like screaming at Malcolm like so angry at him and uh, I'm just like this is this is good because you can run with that you can take it different ways and then you kind of settle in what you know underneath what the motivations are for each each of the characters and uh, find the way that you that you want. Um, unfortunately, one of my favorite takes for um, Garrett, who did the voice for for Malcolm, was when he was um, talking about the 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 device in his head that would like you know kill him. Um, and and he did this one performance where his voice just kind of like, cracked at the end because he was like I'm like that, do that again. <laughs> so we did that until he lost his voice. So now you're like, a director. 
Now you're a director. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so that was the end of it. But it was so it was so much fun to do that, um, and just the the everyone's reaction across the community um, from Brent, from I mean, Wyeth, we from were, everyone. First of all, I had no idea that that's how it really came about. That you had so many different people involved, and I think that's even cooler because you get to, you had you could go you suddenly took what's so internal within our own community and did exactly what you're what we want people to do is go outside of the community mm -hmm. be like look there's this thing that i how you know get people involved and that's the most beautiful way of getting them involved is just through yeah. art and it's fun Absolutely. and it's exciting and it's cool it that fun. your friend meredith was clearly she felt some sort of connection there you know like she understood mm -hmm. why she needed to be so angry and where that anger stemmed <laughs> from so i think that's awesome so let's take a second to watch the video I won't pass you if you're not forthcoming, Commander. Oh, how will you know one way or another? I'm good at my job. Yeah, so am I, and I'd like to keep mine. One wrong answer or someone else is heading wherever that ship goes. Being that person means a lot to you. It must. Why do you say that? There's a good chance I'm going to die. Does that bother you? It bothers me that it doesn't. What was it you told General Alvarez? It's inviting me to take a trip? You described the voice in your head as friendly. Well, first, it wasn't a voice, so much as a feeling, it was a presence. And second, no, I said it wasn't unfriendly. It's not the same. At best, it was indifferent. But you don't get the sense these beings have malevolent intent. Correct. So why do you think you might die? Because everyone else seems to think so. Why are you so certain of that? The gun, the pill, and you. Care to explain? They found machines inside the ship, part mechanical, part alien organisms. The gearheads, designed a gun they think can punch a hole through their exoskeleton. But that probably won't matter. I mean, who knows what they can do when they're powered up? You're a soldier, Commander Orion. Do an assessment. Can you hold your own against one of them? No! Whoever built that ship has a million years on us, Doc. If one of those things wants me dead, I'm dead. And it doesn't matter. There's no way only one of them is waiting on the other side, which is why they gave me the pill. The neural implant. Yeah, you know how it works? I know it's painless. Well, that's what they tell you. The truth is, if the mission goes sideways, I trigger the neurotransmitter and boom! My cerebral arteries burst and everything that I am, everything that I ever was, is gone! That's quite an image. And then there's you, Doc. What about me? There's two reasons I'm here right now with you. And those are? First, for you to decide if I'm ready to die. Are you, Malcolm? Yes. I believe you. Good. You said there are two reasons we're meeting? The second is for you to try to talk me out of this. And how would I do that? No, oh, you'd start by telling me there's no shame in backing out now. I'm sorry, Commander, but you're wrong. I'm not going to do that. I've done my homework, Doc. Your AI programming is designed to offer an off-ramp in situations like these. Only when I perceive that there is a chance it will be accepted. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. And if I may say so, Commander, you have very little of that left. So what, what do you think the community's, what was the community's reaction to the story visualization? Because I remember when we, um, when we first saw it, I think yeah. Wyeth first saw it, or somebody found it through Discord, obviously. Yeah. And it was like, everybody started popping into the channel, just like freaking out, being like, this is oh, really? so cool. Because for <laughs> us, it was the first moment where not only the, is the, the, the issue that you visualized was only the second one that came out. And mm -hmm. we haven't really stimulated that conversation with the community yet of like, go create. Like we have, like we've yeah. mentioned it and we talk about it and that's what we mm -hmm. want people to do. But you know, it's hard to expect that from, pe from such a new community and such a new concept still, you know, we're still very much. Yeah. And every day we have new members, which is the other issue, or well, issue, uh, other obstacle yeah. to, you know, overcome and kind of constantly have people um, up to date and be like, this is, you have so many different resources. You have all these different stories um, create, but most importantly, feel feel like you want to create like we never want to force anybody to do it it's yeah. that, like you said like you just you had an idea and it sparked some kind of interest yeah. and then you got the right people involved and it happened so what did how did you when you first shared it with the community what was their reaction i mean it, it kind of it, it kind of sprouted pretty quickly um and the one the one comment that stood out to me the most was when wyeth posted he's like hey this made my month 
like just yeah. like right right there i'm like well, i wasn't i wasn't expecting that kind of impact to me i'm like it was it was fun but this is kind of like hey this isn't an, an input to malcolm's voice if anyone wants to check it out i uh and the animation side of it like this was that was my first time ever working in unreal engine mm. and i i'd never i'd never done that before and so i was wanting to learn learn out initially i was just going to throw the audio file into discord and like hey here check this out but um i think the performances that the actors uh, gave out of it i'm like i think we should do a little bit more and i'll give me a chance to kind of like figure out unreal engine and is that just... how you animated all the basically yeah. like characters and yeah visuals? all that was an unreal engine um and, and you know i think anyone who's created in that type of stuff you know that um art assets is probably the most expensive thing that you can that you can end up having to assemble luckily yeah. unreal engine has kind of their own limited database of free stuff um and that was along my other ideas of of what that perks of the universe is going to come through yeah. with is they're going to release a, so many assets. We're going to release use. so much more. Yeah, definitely. Right. But that's cool. And, that's uh, a good point that there are platforms out there. We can maybe uh, list it in the description um, where you do have all this just stock, like basically just stock footage, right? Like royalty is, free yeah. footage that you can completely, um, you know, you don't need to spend hours trying to design yeah. some crazy um, exactly. visuals. Awesome. Yeah. No, and everything in there, even the, the metahumans, I didn't even, I didn't even adjust them. I just downloaded the default ones, just threw them in there and just, it was just, this assembly that's all Beautiful. i was doing yeah yeah Which it looks fun. great and, i mean and like nobody would be able to look at that and be like oh he didn't draw it but that's not the point right like that's so remember, yeah, that, yeah. important to remember that it doesn't matter how you create it like as long as you're not stealing from anybody yeah um, exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing that you know don't do that um <laughs> yeah it's, there's just so many resources and so many different um softwares and platforms and even other communities yeah. that can help it and uh, and that kind of gets us into when when you know we broke into the progenitor uh, project because uh, initially I was just messing around with um, some of the concept art. I did this a little is your second 2. video, 5D. right? This is the second video. Yeah, I did a little two point five D animation with one of the um, like construction sites outside the progenitor. Just, mm -hmm. just I wanted to see how like that would could mix with like a three D environment. Um, awesome. And then that one thing led to the other. Just like, well, why don't we just figure out like a way like we're breaking into it? And then I asked, I asked like the creator chat, I'm like, well, what should we find in there? I'm like, oh, we should we should find uh, you know we should find proteins. I'm like, okay, well, let's build a room full of proteins, and so we we did that. And like, what else do we find in here? And um, and I'm like, well, does anyone want to put and give me their art? Like, we can just so there's like a whole art gallery inside this inside of the, this room of the progenitor. And like, if you go through, you you'll recognize everyone's art from the fan art pages down there. Oh my god, wait, I'm so excited to through. watch it. Yeah, and um, and there were one of our community members um, who's an awesome and blender built a jump chair that kind of comes out of the ground and and so we he, and I, I sat on vc with him and he kind of showed me all of how he designed it and how it works and so we animated like jumping in a, a, a rayu there at the end so yeah i mean it was just fun like we were just kind of messing around but i think it can show like what you know if you start if, you know, if you're an artist like hey I, I would love to work with you like we there's things that we can we can piece together and start building yeah. stuff in here. Um, and it clearly just to show that people want to, as long as there's yeah. somebody, I feel like it always takes, it always takes that one person, you know, my mom always says it always takes that one person to start dancing. And she's always the first person to start <laughs> dancing anywhere. And then people will start to dance. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like one, it's yeah. exactly one of those things where it takes one person, especially in the imagine the future when we have so many different people mm -hmm. all with all these different ideas. Absolutely. I, it's, pretty exciting to think about like what can come out of that so yeah. i'm really really pumped for it um so it's amazing that you got so much of the community involved That's so it, exciting. It, and, and uh and they were joining me like so that project i was like well why don't i work on it in creator vc and so mm -hmm. like because i saw um i saw stag was doing working his art he was doing the same thing too and so he would just log in there and just kind of work and people it, it turned into a kind of a hangout session i was like oh well why don't we do that and like i noticed that people plop in and we just and we just start talking about everything um uh, brian jumped in and he divulged so much alpha to all of us and we're like whoa like what <laughs> um as we just kind of chatted away and it kind of it's kind of built into this um um kind of community friend zone where we get to kind of build to, uh, together all, all underneath the same IP, which is just so much fun. So exciting. I can't wait for uh, for more heroes to come out. We have another, um, I think at this point it will have already come out. We have story page six coming out, issue number six. Mm. 
to be really exciting sneak peek. Yes. I'm pretty sure it's when Ryu encounters, sorry, Malcolm Orion encounters Ryu for the first time. So oh, it's going to be pretty cool. cool. I'm excited to see. Maybe you can do something for that because I think that kind of a visualization would be awesome. That would be to really see. Cool. Yeah. I, it's so funny because like, I, even though I'm sure I could find it somewhere, I'm trying to stay the same on the same level, almost like with the community. So I try to read the pager when it comes out. Oh, I'll like yeah? Sometimes I'll have to scan it before because we need some quotes from it or, you know, yeah. we need some other like context for what we need to write, let's say write copy for the tweet or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I tend to not read the whole thing because I find it exciting to kind of be on the same level and know as much as you guys. Yeah. Because... I don't even in meetings sometimes I'm like wait but then what happens <laughs> you know <laughs> they're also very yeah. secretive about it as well like it's good, not um good. it is very you know it's exciting because it's like everything's just happening in real time which I yeah. think is probably my favorite thing about the project is that it's just everybody's learning together everybody's trying to figure mm -hmm. everything out learning yeah. about Malcolm's story learning about the universe itself like we have still yet to discover the hub technically the masso but in more detail and see who else is yeah. there um let alone all the crazy characters and comics that are I gonna know. come what are you most mm -hmm. excited for so so brian's hyped me up um a, a lot around um being able to download my own reuse um into like get get grabbing their 3d model like throwing them into uh you know unreal engine and having your own your own animation asset I'm like yes these are designed for video games and by all means like if you're a game developer like go forth and like conquer this is gonna be so much fun um but to me i'm just like there's this is a great way to transform kind of what independent filmmaking is now into hey let's all hang out and and build together here we have these uh, these assets that are would would cost me so much money to actually try to make myself if we wanted to go forward, let alone yeah. already have a well written and beautifully structured story that we can just kind of jump into. Yeah. What would you where 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 do you see yourself going with that if you were to be able to download him and have fully um, break him? Oh gosh. So it, it's <laughs> the, there. I think first would just be something fun just to do an animation test. Um, I think I already promised someone that I wanted to make a zombie version of a radio just to see, just to see if it could be done. Um, I think that'd be I'm so sure funny. Brent, would, Brent would be pulling his hair out like, no, um, <laughs> but like, it's going to happen, right? Someone's going to make, someone's going to make the zombie movie of the universe. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and I think if we take a step back on like what, what could be out of all of this, um, you're having this access to the IP is you can recreate almost any of these major movies yeah. into the form and update it, modernize it within this IP, right? Mm -hmm. Like who's going to like, for example, like Titanic is the modernization of Romeo and Juliet, yeah. right? So what's the Romeo and Juliet story going to be within the universe? Mm -hmm. it, it, there, <laughs> there's going to be one, uh, Probably, um, you know, and it kind of goes the same thing with, you know, you know if you take some of the rays, if you looked at um, a lot of the rays without his face mask on, mm -hmm. that would be an amazing horror villain in a, in a he horror looks flick. terrifying. I know, he looks right? truly terrifying. He really so looks who's, terrifying. Who's going to do the cabin in the woods, but on some planet <laughs> running from a ray? Someone's going to do it. It's not going <gasps> to be canon, but it's going to be fun. But you know what? It's hilarious because I actually thought about this. Um where I think I watched an interview with JK Rowling and she was saying that, um, she was saying a couple of things. One, she was writing, she was just finishing her uh, Deathly Hollows part two, mm -hmm. I think. Um, or is Deathly Hollows divided into two or is it one and two or is it, I think it's two parts, right? I avoided the movies. I read the books. <sighs> okay. Fair enough. Anyways, but she was talking <laughs> about how, you know, when she first got approached to create these movies, <laughs> How somebody asked her, like, were you nervous? And she was like, of course I was nervous, but I was beaming with excitement because I, the idea of my characters having a completely different story in a way and that different yeah. within a different context, but most importantly, just having that visual support. And I think she, she said that with every movie, it was so exciting because the first movie was so different than she expected. I don't know how different it is from the books because I haven't read the books, but, yeah. um, 
she was just saying that seeing that progress and almost having like two versions of your own story is pretty awesome. And I was thinking of like, what yeah. would the, what would the universe movie be? And how cool would it be to have all these different sequels where like the first one, obviously Malcolm comes, he discovers yeah. Mars, he discovers creator tech. He sits in that chair for the first time. He encounters Ryu. And then what if he encounters Krisha and falls in love with Krisha, but he needs to go back and see his <laughs> kids. Like he wants, you know, he wants to go back. You yeah. know, he's like at this point, probably you know much yeah. older if you were to go back to earth they probably wouldn't be there anymore i would assume um yeah. but anyways like having just thinking of that you know um what would you want to see the universe in the future like would you prefer to see it as a movie as a show as an animation so naturally i want to do it as a movie and mm -hmm. i know i threw i threw tony and um and, and Brent a grenade over the weekend during the radio meant I was like, Hey, I wrote uh -oh. a script of the very first scene go. <laughs> and they're like, Oh, we can't, we can't read this right now. Um, Wait, but, you wrote a first script. So, so I, I wrote a, it, it's just, it's just a short, like four page script about what Mike Malcolm's going away, saying goodbye to Rayla and his kids. Just that very first section from the very first issue. Oh my goodness. Um, and, like that can be interpreted so many different ways, right? Because you were taking like what maybe four paragraphs, and then you're 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 creating the details. The details don't exist, so it, it could be yeah. literally anything. Um, you know, if you had a hundred people write that scene, it would be a hundred everybody different, would write it different, completely exactly. different ways, just because those yeah. details haven't really been set. Um, and so, I, to me, like that's the part that piques my curiosity is I want to see what that creator space is going to look like. Like I, I I don't know how we're gonna get there. Um, like there's obviously some some legal things we're gonna have to figure out along the way when it comes to ownership and a lot of yeah. that type of stuff. Um, but I'm so curious to see because it's not gonna necessarily be whoever does the first Malcolm movie. It, that's what it. That's what it is. I think a lot of people might assume that, but then like anyone can remake it, right? How many times have you seen in Peter Pan movies or something like yeah. that? Like, and every story is so, is very different than, from the past. So 100%. Um, I think ultimately then the fans get to decide, right? The, 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 the ones that the fans love the most will probably end up being the generally yeah. accepted storyline. But it's an interesting conversation. Uh, we kind of touched upon that with um, Diane and Brent last week mm -hmm. uh, when we were talking about IP and, you know, she's, both of them have been involved in, in the film industries. But yeah. herself, but Diana specifically, and um, it's an interesting question to raise and talk about the fact of like, you know, how do we, if there's supposed to be this like primary collection of movies of the universe movies, mm -hmm. who, who owns that? What if we didn't come up with the idea, you know, mm -hmm. like what if universal suddenly sees this twitch streamer that has been a community member of ours for years and years and years and he's written this fantastic like what if they read your script and they're like oh mm -hmm. i love this we love this and we want yeah. to do it you know and it's interesting i think the other thing we didn't talk about is like okay there's the legal aspect of that but i will almost think of it as like it'd be fun to believe that because we have the community that we have and the kind of community we're trying to instill and create that Whoever, let's say if you were approached by Universal, you would willingly come back to us and be like, guys, look, look what happened. Like, let's, Yeah. would you like, you, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah, no, absolutely. I would do that. And Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. And well, and, and the, the good part is I think um, the IP is protected under the current license, right? That company, you can't work with other companies over a certain size, right? So at least yes. you. you Universal yeah. isn't going to come over and just take yeah. the reins. And like start somebody can't come stuff. and just take the six page of the or one pagers and go to Warner and be like, "Yo, I'm selling you this." Like, yeah, exactly. It doesn't work that way. Um, uh, but but then it's a matter of you know, well, what if within the within within the community, like we we build it, right? What if we script it out? What if we do our own concept art and we create our own pitch deck of what yeah. this would be um, as a community? That, I think that presents a, another challenge a more fun challenge but then it comes down to well if you have uh, two thousand people who contributed little pieces here and there how does the universe want to handle ownership right exactly if this is a community-owned franchise you, we now have a product that could possibly make a lot of money how and and how do you go about handling that yeah and we all know and, i mean i think in any industry but specifically in the entertainment industry you know as soon as there's a lot of potential for a lot of money 
things yeah. can get very complicated. You know, egos can yeah. come in the way. People will, you know, feel entitled. There's different, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of people that might feel like they're not being rewarded enough and not yeah. given credit for what they do deserve credit for, or maybe not. Mm -hmm. um, it's an interesting conversation. I'm curious where it will go, you know? It, it is. And, 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 and copyright right laws, it was very... I don't necessarily like, agree with the way that the business op operates around it is it's one of the few like jobs that you get hired. You have to sign away kind of like a, a natural right that you have. It's just yeah. like, Oh, your intellectual property. You have to give it up if you want to get paid for this job. Um, you don't really see that really in anywhere else. Right. And so it's so like the, the break into the progenitor video, right? Anyone who contributed art to that, if you want to go file a copyright claim, it is all in your right to do that. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm not about like collecting people's stuff from the community and making them have to sign a release. Right. Cause that's, it's theirs. Like they own that piece. Now the, the, the commons license that we have right now uh, within the universe, like any ideas that like of, characters or places and stuff that, that could be derivative work out of what you just created is for everyone. But that piece yeah. of work that you created is still yours. You still own that. Um, so, so then that's, that will be kind of be the, the hurdle of how we want to, would want to divvy up ownership of um, any larger projects. And I'm not yeah. sure how the best way around that. Um, but boy, I would love to brainstorm in that space for a while. Yeah. I think, you know, I, in many cases, I think it'll just, it'll come down to it. Like, it'll just be like, mm -hmm. we have to figure out, we have this situation. It's really hard to think of this kind of in this context without an ex like an example. Um, yeah. so I think, you know, with time we're it's still, that's still ahead of ourselves. Like it, we, we are know, looking it's not like, way down please, way nobody down expect movies in four years. <laughs> like, that's the, the, this, is a, this is a game franchise first and we, and we this are all on exactly. board. But... So speaking of which, let's talk about gaming. Cause I yeah. am not a gamer at all mm. like i've played okay no f scratch that i played gta when i was a kid okay um i you know grew up playing a lot of like uh nintendo and um your classic like like classic sure. games mario kart you know what i mean yeah um but interestingly enough right as i first started working within random games this was around last december um i had to it was two years ago sorry um I had to be locked in because COVID and I just started seeing someone and we had to basically his roommate got COVID and we had to all yep. live together for three days, like three weeks, <laughs> me and two boys, oh older, like older, a little older than me. And yep. they are major gamers and they would play like Call of Duty. One of them would play League of Legends like 99% of the day. Um, and I was suddenly in this, like, it was really interesting moment for me because I just started working with random games and I, everybody's like every, most of people, most of our team members are in some way have been playing games or, or a fan mm -hmm. of games. Yeah. And I didn't really, you know, it was really hard for me to connect and kind of feel what they felt. And yeah. as soon as I started, literally took me two days to see these guys play. <laughs> and I was like, I get it. Like, I really yeah. get it. I get, I yeah. understand the beauty in games, the opportunity, the, way you can just create a complete identity for yourself you're mm -hmm. in this new space and new world and i think then when i started really putting all these different pieces together i was like the universe game is going to be so much fun <laughs> Absolutely. so much fun what do you Absolutely. think is where do you see the universe game what would you want the first game to be oh man you know and again this kind of comes from not playing games for a long time um the, the open ended world games for me were always the funnest. I mean, like when you're talking like, like fallout or, uh, you know, the elder scroll series, like uh, to me, like exploring a world and like all the little details and storylines that you can just come upon and, and find to me, like that's the most fun. Like I, I get, there's a massive industry for first person shooters and those are, you know, those can be fun as well, but give and then and the background backstory of the universe i want to explore give me a spaceship yeah. let me like let explore. me walk myself around jump around and explore and just find the stories that exist across the whole uni universe like that that would just probably consume my entire <laughs> curiosity 100%. for a very long time I, I would really enjoy that i agree i mean i think that would be the i think but that's the whole point right is you have the chair and that's what the chair is supposed to allow you to do is just go explore yeah. and mm -hmm. You know, with no rules, no boundaries, you can just yeah. go. I mean, there are some rules, but you can transport your consciousness to anywhere in the world. And I think the whole point is that 
as you know the SDK will come out and more people are going to mm -hmm. all these different games are going to start existing within the universe you're just going to be able to travel not just within one game but multiple games and yeah. you're actually going to be able to somehow you know have experiences and see people playing a completely different game but they're exploring things that you are but they're not seeing the things that you are yeah um i really think it'd be fun to at some point have like a universe of vr experience oh absolutely I think with visuals and everything like just the quality of what we're doing and the gravity of you know everything being very spacey it's all in space right yeah um it's very futuristic super modern i think that that would yeah i think that would look cool um that's really fun i have a lot of friends who still go to those vr studios like we can mm -hmm. go use their vr equipment and play those games yeah. and i think they have like a select list of games that you can choose but it'll be interesting to see who's the first person to have a, a universe community game in there That'd be cool. I'm curious. I think we should, yeah. we need a game first. Um, but then, <laughs> but even I think almost like a, we were thinking, cause you know, we, um, I think it'd be amazing for us to start having in-person events and yeah. we're obviously planning for that, you know, to attend different NFT, NFT events and even just conferences and Comic-Con and all these different places. And, um, we're trying to think of, you know, ways that we can really bring the universe experience to people without just being like, hey, this is what we do. This is what it is. Um, and almost thinking like designing some sort of fun visual journey that you yeah. can go through and almost like see the summary of what the universe is and, um, experience it a little bit. So maybe you can help us out with that. Cause I think that could be fun. Let's do it. It'd be fun. Yeah. It'd be fun. It'd be a great way to onboard anyone new coming into the, to the community. Um, instead of Definitely. being thrusted deep into discord. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, I can imagine trying to be in like somebody new joining and, you know, we're still very early on. We're going to have so, like, we have only going to be having primarily yeah. new people, which is why I think community members like being, getting to know each other, getting to support each other and understanding who they are, what their skill sets are, where they're from mm -hmm. is so important because you guys are going to have to be the ones that keep people up to date and really get people yeah. to feel like they're welcome and they're not confused by all the different, you know, levels of, um, content and story and anthology that they need to decipher. Um, and that's a, that's a really good point. The community roles, I think, um, are really important. Um, we were having a discussion a couple weeks ago, the topic came up of community merchandise. Like, like no one's really built, built any, Merchandise. We had like the t-shirt the competition and like those kind of sold out and like that was kind of it. And um, we, we were discussing and we realized that I feel like we're all kind of waiting for some sort of direction from the Universe team. And uh, and, and so we're, we were discussing, we're like, I don't think we, we need to be waiting for them. I think we all know as a community, like, like the merchandise sales is on the bottom of their priority list. Like if we want it, let's go build it, right? Yeah. And like, so let, let's figure out how, what do we want the the – the user interface to be if you're looking for community merchandise, right? Yep. Where's the store registry going to live? Is it like, are we going to put that in discord? How are we going to organize that? Like that is can, entirely can be done by the community. We don't need one or Wyeth or anyone trying to, to, to nobody baby step us through that. Yeah. Um, and I think once you open the doors of realizing, Oh, well, what else can we do as a community? If we don't need the official team who's, you know, underwater building this game and, and putting out all these amazing collectibles um, to hold our hands through that process. Like, I, th I think once we kind of kickstart that, like, I think we'll start um, building out that discord, having that, the, uh, the, the, the process of onboarding new people into the community already built in. And like, we don't, we don't necessarily need the team's help to do that. We can do that on yeah. our own. You can do it on your own, 100%. And we're definitely mm -hmm. looking into that. And I think merch is a great way to start because yeah. it's universal. Everybody loves a little bit of merch. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm wearing some of our... Oh, nice. Uh, oh, no, it's on the other side. Universe merch. Um, and it's, you know, it's there's some things we need to clear before we can um, advise you how to do it best because... You know, there's yeah. some IP issues because of third-party platforms. But that being yep. said, if you, for example, wanted to go create a some kind of company, start, open a Shopify, and sell mm -hmm. Universe merch, you could very well do that. That's no Absolutely. problem, you know? So that's, I think, the where the, the roots we're trying to explore now is like, mm -hmm. what is the safest way for us, the safest, the, you know, the most responsible way for us to go about this and... um make sure that everybody can feel very free and creative rather than restricted yeah. and um, 
you know, afraid or confused on how this yeah. works. And, you know, somebody's teasing me for this. Um, <laughs> so we're, that's definitely somewhere I think, you know, in the, in the plan, but like you said, if there's community members that want to do things like that, go do it. Like even yeah. just design it. Cause like, if we, mm-hmm. you know, if I pop into discord and I see some kind of really awesome hoodie design, like yeah. you can bet that I'm going to go back to Tony with that and be like, we need to make this and we need yeah. to make it now. <laughs> so, you know, create there's no harm in doing that and i think all of that living within the within discord and just really embracing the community is the best thing any member can do right now yeah um so oh yeah good and and i think i think the one part i want to put out to anyone listening to this is if you if you haven't been too involved with the community there's always almost always someone of the super legends hanging out in the discord right and if you have an idea if you're not too sure like hey i want to i want to start a a merchandise shop or like hey i want to start you know, creating a short film. Is there anyone that I can like link up with? Um, I, I highly encourage jumping in on any of the, the, the voice chats um, uh, and in, in any of the, the chat rooms over there to be able to start meeting people. Um, and the super legends respond very quickly. They can help like meet you or help you meet the right people that you're looking for uh, mm-hmm. and give you the best advice to get started. Uh, a lot of them will probably yeah. want to jump in with them with you as well. If you, um, you know, I like to close off my, you usually ask, what's your world building secret? But I think in this case, what is your advice to somebody, a new community member, let's say that's going to join tomorrow? Mm. <clears throat> I think for, for someone who's, um, who's just getting into the universe is jump into the discord, um, meet our super legends and share with us what you are interested in, right? If you like to write, right? If you like to draw, if you like to develop games or anything, anything, if you're a voice actor, please reach out. <laughs> I can use it. <laughs> um, like, like any of, any of those aspects, you're like, Hey, like, I love this story. I'd love to you know learn more about it. Um, and I'd like to get involved. Uh, this is kind of what we are, uh, what are, d- what's what the game is right now right yes we're, we're doing collectibles yes we just went through the Rayu Mint, which was super fun um sold out but, baby oh man that was such a good experience so cool. <laughs> congrats <laughs> to the team on that too um but uh right now like there's a lot of us who are building um and you may not always see that in the discord um and maybe that's something that we we change in, in the future is to make it a little bit more that's visible what what projects are actively going on in the background by community members so you can see what the status is, see if there's any way that you can contribute. Um, but we just had, um, uh, we just had someone drop a bunch of their own music in the community, in the creative I saw. chat a couple of they days ago. Me. I oh, saw they nice. tagged me. In the- yeah. And so like that's downloaded on my computer and like, that's all of our background working music when we're like creating and stuff like that. So there, there is space for anybody here. Um, anything. and, uh, I just, I want to encourage people to have everyone to kind of get involved because there's once this, this is going to grow really fast. I think, I think, I think Wyatt was saying there's a six or seven terabytes of stuff they're trying to, to put onto the community assets. Um, and once that happens, it's going to, the creator world is going to be huge. And like that alone is, you could have so much fun in. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kevin. Such a pleasure having you on. It was Um, a pleasure being here. You're a great community member and I can't wait to see more of the things you design and visualize with the rest of our members. Absolutely. No, this should be a lot of fun moving forward. 